Hello and welcome to another Flight Gear tutorial. Today I want to show you two things. First I want to show you how to handle the Cessna C172 in Flight Gear, especially the autopilot and the na its navigation system. And secondly I want to demonstrate this new volcano feature that is now included in Flight Gear version I think 2019 so it's one of the latest features so I located our airplane the C172 on the airport of Catania on the island of Sicily and there are two spectacular volcanoes nearby as you can see there is the Etna and on an island a little bit more to the north there is the Stromboli um, volcano and both are animated now very nicely if you activate this uh, volcano scenario so I will show you where to find it in the menu and then we will hopefully get some spectacular views on these two volcanoes so let's get ourselves into the cockpit and let's start up our airplane so what I prepared already, I lowered the fuel load, so uh, by default both tanks are almost completely filled, so I lowered the fuel capacity to half. And um, we can already adjust the altimeter, there's a little tweak to that. So for the correct altitude here we need the, the right um, air pressure in the altimeter. We can have a look in our weather menu. So. The current air pressure is 1015 hectopascal but as this is an American made airplane the uh, altimeter works with inches and not with uh, the metric system so how do we uh, how would you how do we cal calculate that well we could calculate it manually but there is no use for us we can have an easier way just use the instrument settings and in this little instrument settings menu you get both values at the same time so the uh, the air pressure in in inches in the American system and also in hectopascal and what we need is 1015 so we turn this knob here until we see 1015 in this instrument settings menu and then we're done now we will start up the plane manually there is also an auto start option but uh, the the uh, the manual startup it is very easy and it is fun to do to prepare everything i would like to make the yokes disappear it's very easy you can either press the y button on your keyboard or you can simply click here on the axis of your yoke and that makes the yoke disappear and reappear once you click it and by the way, the same applies to the navigation system here. This is also a rather new feature in this airplane. To make this navigation system appear and disappear, you have to click on this coiled cable here to make it appear and disappear. So don't be surprised if all of a sudden your navigation system is gone. It means you have been clicking somewhere here in this area and that makes it disappear. Just remember if you want your navigation system to appear, you have to click here beside the, uh, the, the co-pilot's yoke axis and that makes it appear and disappear. Okay, so no yoke. So how do we prepare the plane? First we uh, turn on uh, the electricity, master both master switches. We turn the magnetos to both. You use your mouse wheel to do that. You switch on the avionics power, powered by the battery. We activate the landing lights for start. Then we push in the mixture lever to full rich. So you can use uh, your mouse wheel to do that. And I also got a lever on my uh, on my flight sim yoke to do that so full rich then you push in your throttle here the the, thr the throttle lever to let's say 20 percent that's something you need for engine startup and then you press the primer here three times once twice three 
and you can also see there is a built-in counter and now if you press the Sierra key on your keyboard the engine should start up okay make sure that your parking brake is set here like this is it is, it is activated so that your plane does not start rolling because we already applied 20% of uh, throttle here to get a better overview of the surroundings first you zoom out with your x-ray button or uh, x-ray in uppercase let's make the yokes appear again by clicking on it and we can also raise our seat position press the control key on your keyboard and then use the right mouse button and then you can push up the view so that you get a view over the nose of your plane this is very useful uh, especially for us for takeoff and landing okay we make the taskbar disappear with function key number 10 and the navigation system we will start up later okay so we want to take off, take a left turn heading north. When you press the Charlie key, it makes the whole cockpit disappear so have, that you have a free view. Let's have a look. So we want to go northbound to pay a visit to the Etna volcano. So we pre we uh, pre select here with the heading bug. We pre select a northern course. That's already the default. Then we turn on the DME but I found out that uh, we don't receive any DME signal here from the two uh, VOR, NDBs that, uh, VOR DMEs that are nearby. Switch to number one. We turn on the squawk. 1200 is a standard squawk for VFR flying, for visual flight rules, and we go to mode altitude. We don't apply flaps. Here, this is the flaps lever. You've got three flaps position, up one and two. We keep the flaps up for takeoff. Okay, now we um, we deactivate the parking brake so that our plane can roll freely. We use the rudder pedals for steering, and now we apply full throttle. And make sure that you keep your plane centered here on the center line of the runway. Use the rudder pedals to, to get this done. Don't pull up too soon. You need at least 60 knots to generate enough lift. And now we gently pull up just a little bit. One of the most important instruments in this airplane is the virtual speed indicator here. So your climb rate should be something around 500 uh, feet per minute you have to make sure that you don't use excessive climb rates above uh, 1000 feet per minute here above this 10 marker that would already be critical you could easily lose a lot of speed and then uh, get into a stall so i also use the uh, the elevator and a rudder trim here so i configured elevator trim which you can find also here on my yoke and also we will need the rudder trim for later because this airplane as it's got only one propeller it tends to bank to the left if you just uh, use a neutral um, rudder trim so you should trim the airplane when you are when we are going straight you should trim your airplane a little bit to the right apply a little bit of right uh, rudder trim to make the plane uh, keep its its um, wings perfectly leveled so we're turning towards the mountain towards the etna volcano but we will not be heading directly for the volcano top because we would have to use such an excessive climb rate to get over the top of that mountain uh, with a direct approach that we would slow down too much and get into a stall. So we're aiming a little bit right of the volcano and do a, a U-turn once we are north of the Etna volcano. So now we can start using the autopilot. Press AP. It keeps the wings leveled for the for the beginning. 
Now it's just flying straight ahead and when we are pressing the heading button the autopilot will follow the heading bug that is indicated here in your compass. So we will be aiming for this uh, for this uh, eastern slope of the volcano and we are currently overloading our engine so we have to reduce the the um, engine speed we can do this uh, in two different ways we can reduce throttle or we can use a leaner fuel mixture and that's what i will do i will always keep the full throttle and instead reducing the engine speed by leaning down the mixture so I want to keep this needle here between 2,500 2, revs per minute and this red delimiter. If you always keep it in, in, this, uh, in this area between 2,5 and 2,7, then you would squeeze the maximum uh, horsepower out of the engine without actually overloading the engine. Make sure that your engine doesn't overheat, otherwise you have to reduce the engine speed even more. Okay, now we want to climb. You, we can use the autopilot for that as well. We press the, here's the altitude mode, and then with up and down, you can select a vertical speed. Press again, altitude off, and now we're using 700, 700 feet per minute climb rate. As long as your speed is high enough, you can use even a higher climb rate. I think 1000 would be the maximum, which is still safe. And the higher you climb, the less climb rate you have to apply. So a standard climb rate would be for this airplane would be something around 500. And once we're above 10,000 feet, we should not climb faster than 300 feet per minute. We will try today the maximum altitude that this plane can achieve. Because this is the third thing I want to demonstrate today. First is this volcano feature, then how to use the navigation system, and the third, how what is the um, the peak altitude that this uh, airplane can safely reach. So we're getting slower, even too slow. Below 80, that's uh, already too slow. Let's reduce the climb rate to 500. This is a healthy climb rate, 500 when we're still in thick air here in this low altitude. Okay, we, um, we will enrich the mixture a little bit more to get above 2,500 uh, revs per minute. So, but stay below the red limit here. This would be optimal for now. An optimal balance between speed, climb rate and not to overload the engine. Now we can turn off the landing light. Let's have a look from outside. Yeah, you can see this bright landing light. We will turn it off now. We don't need it now that we're airborne. We will use it only for takeoff and landing. So we click this landing light. Okay. I press the Charlie button on the keyboard again to get a full view of our volcano. Ah, you can see it's already spitting smoke, but I want to show you also how to operate those volcanoes. Okay, we're stable now from the point of view of the, of the autopilot. Let's see what else we can use here just a brief tutorial about the autopilot so to, to turn it on and off to hand over the the control of the airplane to the autopilot you press ap heading there are different heading modes there's just uh, the wing leveler or heading mode means that the plane will follow the this red heading bug in your compass then altitude is you got two different altitude modes just to uh, just to keep the current altitude or to, to manually select the climb rate. So if you press altitude, it will simply keep the current altitude. You will see that the, the climb rate will sink to zero. You just keep the current altitude. And if you press again, then you can manually select your climb or sink rate. If 
500 again. You can also choose a target altitude. I'm not sure if the plane really stops at this flight level, but at least if you're 1000 feet below your target altitude, there will be a beeping warning sound that you're about to reach your target flight level. So we will turn it down, let's say to 15,000. Okay. We are quite fast, so we can afford also the, you see, we're overloading the engine. We're gonna lean down the mixture a little bit more to slow the engine down. We also turn the plane a little bit more to the right to get away from the volcano slope, not to be in danger to collide with the slope. So we will fly in circles. We will uh, go counterclockwise around the volcano until we finally reach the, the volcano top so that we can have a good view. Now we can go for a higher uh, climb rate because our speed is good. We're always uh, trading speed against climb rate and vice versa to, to keep it well balanced. Try to keep maintain a high speed here in the uh, somewhere in the hundreds and also a decent climb rate around 500. These are two good rules of thumb. And as we're climbing higher, we have to adjust our fuel mixture. So we have to lean it down more and more and more. The higher we get, the thinner air we get. And so we have to add less fuel by using a, a leaner mixture uh, for the engine. Let's press Charlie again. So there's the slope. How do we turn the volcano on and off? There's a new menu here, environment volcanoes. And there are two volcanoes nearby. So it shows you, this menu shows you all the volcanoes that are in your vicinity. There's the Stromboli, but this is the second one that we will visit now. for now. It's the Etna. It is enabled. And if you press okay here, you can manually select if this uh, volcano should be active or dormant so we press dormant and that should make it stop spitting smoke you see the smoke stops just the smoke that had already been in the air it is still uh it is still moving up because of the because of the heat and later we can reactivate the volcano with the same with the same menu you, you switch from dormant to active. You can also activate, there are two craters, you can activate one at a time. Okay, let's see, we are much too slow, let's press altitude immediately. Also, we need more engine speed, so we will enrich the mixture to get above 2500 revs. We were close to stall, so below 60 knots is already uh, in danger of getting into a stall. And if the plane gets really unstable, you have to turn off the autopilot by pressing AP and then you have to take manual control of the plane using the yoke. So we're turning a little bit to the left again. You see, the smoke starts disappearing in the air and later we will reactivate. We will try to pass the, the mountaintop between the two craters. Of course, you shouldn't do something like this in real life because the air pollution, the smoke, would most likely uh, pollute your engine, the air intake of your engine, and then your engine would stall and you would simply fall from the sky. So never get too close to a real volcano. This is just for, for kicks, just for simulation. So we steer the plane here with this heading bark dial. We turn to the left. Always make sure you go, don't get too close to the, to the volcano slope. And in the end we will approach it from its northern side. So now we are fast enough. We can crank up the... We can crank up the climb rate again. 300, 300 is a safe bet. Yep, 
we can go even higher 400 always change the climb rate gradually don't go for extremes okay speed is still high enough above 100 is safe so let's crank up the climb rate even more pay attention to the to your engine speed it's good turn the plane more to the left have another look at the volcano here it is we're still too low as you can see from the outside camera so we will be flying in circles around the volcano until we're on the same level as the mountaintop Okay, keep the speed around 100 knots. So we keep turning left. Okay, we are below 100 knots. So first of all, let's lean down the mixture a little bit more. No, we have to enrich it. Enrich so that we're above 2,500 revs. And um, we will lower the climb rate a little to 400. Don't let the speed drop below 80 knots. It's a constant balancing between airspeed, climb rate, engine speed, and you're mostly using your your mixture lever to, to achieve that. I, as I said, I always uh, keep the throttle to 100%. I'm not sure if that's correct in, in real world, but at least here in this flight simulation, it gets the job done. Okay, turn left even more. Speed is good. And now that we're about to approach the volcano, we will turn the volcano on again. Environment, volcanoes, select the Etna, enable, press OK. And then change this slide from dormant to active. And without pressing OK, you see it immediately starts spitting ashes again. What I forgot to do was um, I, when we did the startup, I adjusted the, the air pressure to the air pressure of the airport of Catania. I should have changed it to the standard air pressure, 29 at SMO, 92 inches, way earlier, maybe around 5,000 feet altitude. So but better late than never. So now we go to the standard air pressure to get a real uh, a real um, altitude information. 29 decimal 92 is the standard air pressure above transition level. So we keep on turning left. And this time we should be high enough. When we go for a southern course again, should be high enough. To pass the mountain top between those two craters. 
Now they are both in line, so we will continue circling around the top and then we will move in. get a better and more spectacular view. Let's have a closer look. You can see that it's two craters spitting fire. Very nice and detailed animation. It's a very good job by the developers. So we'll use it. Everything seems fine. 100 knots. Climb rate 500 uh, feet per minute, and the engine speed is on maximum. We should maybe reduce it a little bit, not to overload the engine. Just stay slightly above 2,500. We turn left again. We've now passed uh, 10,000 feet. I'm not exactly sure how high this volcano is, but we are close to the close to the mountain top altitude now. We'll get a better understanding of our flight level if we have the look from outside. Uh, we're not yet on on the same level as the mountain top. Let's reduce the climb rate. 300 because we're slowing down again maybe even more let's use 200 for the time being look from the outside i think we could be high enough now let's reduce the climb rate even more to 100 feet per minute and we're moving in Maybe 200 again. We're just above the mountain top. Have a look at the surroundings. Just a little bit more to the left. Yeah, we are high enough. Keep the current altitude by pressing the mountain.
Okay, that's that for now. And now we will be heading for the second uh, volcano. That's this Stromboli. It's an island here a couple of miles to the north. So we first turn this uh, to turn this plane northbound again. And then now we will keep climbing again. Let's say the 300. Yeah, 300 is okay. Engine is a little bit overloaded. A little bit leaner mixture. Good. And now we want to find this second uh, volcano that has been displayed in the volcano menu. It's the Stromboli. So, let's have a look at the map. Over this second volcano there is also um, a, a fix, a checkpoint, and it's called Vulca. Vulca, so it's not... Uh, it's not hard to guess what that means for volcano. Let's remember this this checkpoint here, Vulca, because we will enter it into our uh, navigation system to find our way. So we are more or less on the correct path, but to get it perfectly right, we will now turn on our navigation system. So. You click this master button here, click it twice to illuminate the screen. And here you got many different options. There's a menu, but um, you can play around with it. It shows you a map of the surroundings and everything. So it, um, it's got a lot of uh, different options and features. But the feature that we want to use to enter this waypoint Vulca is this button here. It took me some time to figure this out. So if you press this button, you can in fact uh, enter a certain, a certain waypoint. And then the display will show you the uh, the location of this of this waypoint. So we quit. Press this. Now press Enter to search. And I think now we can choose with the up and down arrows. We can scroll through a hypothetical keyboard. Okay, let's check our uh, airspeed it's too low while we do this we will keep the current flight level and also the mixture is not okay we need a little bit more fuel enrich the mixture and now we just keep the current flight level so that we can concentrate on the navigation system so just try to remember this button here this gives you the opportunity to to select certain um, waypoints and now you can see by using the up and down arrow you can uh, just through uh, cycle through uh, the alphabet so it's alphanumeric Z we want to we want to enter the name Vulca so V Victor then to the right next one U uniform Next letter, Lima, next, and we could already enter because here, this is it, Vulca, fix, this is where we want to go. Now we say enter, this, uh, this highlights the first, the first, um, uh, option here in this list but you can see 4000 nautical miles that's not where we want to go we want to go to this Vulca fix and that's 58 miles out so this is the the checkpoint that we want to reach so we scroll down and enter and then by page we should be able to press it twice then you should get this screen by by page you can scroll through different views you get this map you get to hear these these uh, LCD instruments with a with a compass, 
and you get this information and this I find my most useful. This is our current GPS position, lo uh, longitude and latitude and our uh, the the bearing that we have to enter into the into the heading bug of the of our autopilot is now six so to head to be heading straight for that for that um, checkpoint 23 that's too much we turn to the left heading bug six that's it six and the waypoint is 55 miles out and it also shows our uh, current speed and altitude and this time it is uh, it is measured with GPS satellites so this GPS system it works pretty similar to a GPS system in your car I don't think that the navigation system itself is directly connected to the to the autopilot as it is for example in a large airliner there you got both you got a GPS based navigation and also your radio navigation and autopilot and this is all interconnected so that you can simply enter a route and then make the autopilot follow the route you can also enter routes here into this navigation system but you have to follow them manually at least that's what it appeared to me if you find out that this is wrong please leave a message in the comments to this video Okay, and once again, if you missed the start of this tutorial, if you press this, uh, if you press with your mouse button on this uh, on this coiled cable here, it makes the navigation system appear and disappear. So make sure that you don't accidentally uh, make your uh, navigation system disappear by pressing on this uh, cable here. Okay, this what I did. It also deactivated the the navigation system so we turn it on press it twice to illuminate and then we do the same thing there's also some antenna here I have no idea what this really does but if you press here it makes the antenna fold up and down I got no idea if the uh, radio transmission gets better or worse because so I would always uh, turn it into a vertical position <laughs> that seems to be the safest bet okay now enter and here so we have to do it again press enter and then no again Vulcan. and we enter and scroll the checkpoint and enter again and then page twice okay 50 miles out when we look back we can still use this uh, smoke cloud from the Etna volcano uh, for orientation to find our way back to the Catania airport Okay, let's climb again because we're going pretty fast but at the same time we want to test the maximum altitude of this airplane so let's climb again if you just when you're in altitude mode and you just press up this makes the plane uh, climb for a little while and then level again so if you want to manually choose a, a vertical speed here a climb rate you have to press altitude to turn off the altitude mode and now you can select the vertical speed. Okay. So the visual effects of this second volcano, they are different. Uh, it is uh, less smoke and more fire. So to get a, a nicer impression of this, I will change the, the daytime. So we go to environment time settings. Go for dawn. So that's a little bit darker. And to change the daytime even more, we can use the time warp. I think if we go for this time warp, we can uh, choose a different time so that it's even darker. 
so that the visibility effect is even better on this second volcano on the Stromboli. So you see the surroundings are turning yellow, but that will change again once we are. Oh, we can. Let's go to 5.30. Local time 5.30 in the early morning. And reset. And now it looks very nice. Early morning scenery. Just sun is just rising. Okay, now I turned the our our uh, cockpit has turned dark. How do we fix this? Okay, let's make the. Oh, we don't even need to uh, make the yoke disappear here. It's these this uh, this button here, or it's a dial. With this, you can uh, change the brightness of your of your radio stack and and autopilot and also of your instruments so when there's this horizontal double arrow you can change the brightness of your of your main instruments and with this vertical double arrow you can change the uh, brightness of your of your radio stack and autopilot so now we're on full brightness here So it would take with this slow airplane. It would take quite some time to uh, to reach the volcano, and that can be very boring. So I will do a time cheat here. So I use the time settings, but while I do this, when I uh, when I compress the time, I have to make sure that we don't stall. So use a lower climb rate. Also enrich the mixture a little. Choose a lower climb rate. Let's keep the, the altitude for the time being. We are too slow now. So we're doing a altitude hold and now we compress time four times. You see, we're gaining speed again, but we're not climbing. So as we're fast enough, we climb with 100 feet per minute. And now we have to balance between um, airspeed and climb rate. We can climb a little steeper, 200. And this was the beeping warning that we are only 1000 feet below our target altitude. Let's see if the climb stops at 15,000 feet or if this is just for the warning indication and if the plane keeps climbing. From earlier experiments, um, I think I remember that I was able to reach almost 20,000 feet. So uh, the plane started to stall around 19,500, but I think it depends on the exact weather conditions and on the air density. So maybe also wind conditions. So maybe we are not able to reach the same flight level every time. Let's see what is our maximum altitude today. And let's readjust the heading bearing 13. So we have deviated a little bit from our track. We turn to the right until we're heading 13 degrees. And we can compress time again. Four times is still safe more than 4, 8, 16, the whole simulation could start oscillating and uh, could the, the simulation could crash or your airplane could crash. I wouldn't go above four times time compression. Okay, let's climb again with 100. Let's climb with 200 feet per minute. There's a lot of torque, a lot of engine speed. Good. Okay, 15,000, that was the second warning, but we keep climbing, you see, this is not a hard limit, it just triggers the warning. So we keep climbing, 16 is, the, is now the new heading indication. You better don't use uh, time compression when you're actually aviating the plane. 
it could lead to an overreaction of the plane and could make it crash so 16 and once you have adjusted the controls you can compress time again let's see how far we are out 20 miles There you can already see the effects. There you can already see the second volcano. So it's also a little bit of smoke, but more fire than smoke. Oh, oh. let's uncompress. They're way too slow. But still, the plane did not stall. They're very lucky not to stall because the airspeed was almost zero. Okay, we're stabilizing again. And keep the current flight level. It's okay. And we can try to slowly climb again we will just do one quick overflight and then this tutorial will end i will not bother you with a return flight to catania you won't learn anything new on the return so what is the reason why you can't perpetually climb with such an airplane the reason is very simple. The higher you go, the thinner the air gets. And this thinner air, it's got two effects. First of all, you need wing lift. So to make the plane climb or even stay on the same flight level, your wings are creating lift. And the, uh, the lower the air density is, the less wing lift there is. How can you counteract this? with a higher with higher airspeed you can rev up your engine and go uh, and fly faster and that would compensate for the reduced lift due to the thinner air but at the same time the thinner the air the less oxygen it contains and that's that uh, deteriorates your engine horsepower so you should go faster but in fact, your plane is slowing down because your engine is losing horsepower at the same time. And so there is a maximum flight level for any kind of plane until you, uh, until you leave the stratosphere. And you can see the effect that your plane is going into a very steep pitch angle. So the, no the nose is pointing up just to keep the current flight level. And this is... Uh, slowing down slowing the plane down even more so the plane is going very slow it's sort of hanging in the air barely hanging on to its current flight level it's going it's very slow and that's when you're about to stall so our our uh, pitch angle is still sort of okay but if we reach the maximum altitude of this plane you will see that this plane would be hanging in the air quite steeply Okay, let's see if we can brighten the, the radio stack even a little bit more. Now it seems to have only two, two levels on and off. And now 200, yeah, we still got enough speed. Also engine speed is okay. We could climb a little more. So 17,000, this is already quite close to the to our top flight level. And I just want to show you this final uh, pitch angle of the plane when we cannot climb anymore without uh, slowing it down too much so that we're getting into a stall. Such a high altitude stall with this kind of airplane is very dangerous because you cannot assume that uh, once you have reached the maximum flight level and the plane is going too slow into a stall that you just slowly uh, sinking again it could be a very abrupt maneuver a very abrupt fall and the plane could start spinning 
uncontrollably uh, around its roll axis and this is something you cannot catch anymore so this uh, could lead to a fatal accident if you get into a high altitude stall with this kind of airplane it's something you must avoid it is far from harmless okay so this is your volcano the Stromboli and there you can see a totally different kind of visual effect so it's spitting more fire than smoke than this Etna mountain. Very nice effect, very nicely done. So I wonder what the inhabitants of this island are thinking right now. So there are settlements here. I don't think that they feel very comfortably right now with this level of volcanic activity. And now you can clearly see it. You see this very steep pitch angle. So we are close to, to the point of stall when the plane is slowing down so drastically that it cannot keep uh, enough wing lift. Ah, there is already the stall warning. So the airspeed is almost zero. We can try to catch it with the autopilot but under normal circumstances you would uh, you would certainly deactivate the autopilot and try to catch the plane manually from its fall so it's banking to the to the right as you can see here with the horizon instrument with the gyro okay we level the wings this is the first thing you must do level the wings because if you have a roll angle here, it also reduces a uh, wing lift. Okay, and now we just keep the altitude and speed is low, but sort of okay. So we're, now we're very close to our maximum. So you can see uh, the, the pitch angle has stabilized. And one final overview of the Stromboli Island with the volcanic activity. And this is it for today for this little Cessna 172 and volcano tutorial in flight gear. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Goodbye.